Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh, and this is Josh. Hi. Now, a lot of you might know that I have interest in World War II. I, I would say it's more than a passion. Uh, for the past year and a half, Josh has been traveling all over and actually capturing World War II vet stories, sharing them and preserving them. He's been doing an amazing job, and we're going to have links down below for all that content and how you can see what Josh has accomplished. Yeah, it's been, it's been a real honor. I'm really excited about it. But today, we're excited to have a couple ladies here on the show that we're talking to who are actually developing a mini-series and a documentary about the Women's Air Force Service Pilots, or WASPs. So today, we have the honor of interviewing Mattia Carell and Hillary Prentice. Now you may have recognized some of the work that Mattia has done because she is an Oscar nominated director and she's directed episodes on shows like The Wonder Years, Army Wives, and The West Wing. Mattia and Hillary, we're really excited to have you guys with us today. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for both. having us. Now Mattia, you're directing a miniseries called Fly Girls. Uh, what can you tell us about the series? We have been working on Fly Girls, the series, for uh, a little over two years, I think is correct. And I've been researching this project for probably over 20 years. It is the Women's Air Force Service Pilots of World War II. It is the unknown history of women aviators in World War II who flew for the United States. Many people have no idea that these, this group of women existed. Many people have no idea of, of what they did, how they operated, that they were very much part of the contribution to the United States during World War II. This is a dramatic series. It's not intended as a documentary. We liken it to Band of Brothers in the sense that we want to get to know these women. We want to get to know who they, who they were, what their lives were. We want to know their, their flaws, their, their strengths, and really present a three-dimensional portrait of women. Mattia likes to talk about the power of narrative storytelling, mm -hmm. and Fly Girls is a narrative, and not to be condescending or patronizing, just to make absolute clear, because sometimes these words don't translate outside of Hollywood, it's scripted. So there will be a script, there will be actors, there will be directors, literally like Band of Brothers. And I do make that distinction because we do get confused as a documentary. Um, but as Mattia likes to talk about the power of narrative storytelling, it's different than documentary filmmaking. Well, it has the power to humanize. It has the power to understand and go deeper into a character so that these women have a more philosophical rendering of who they were, what they wanted, what their goals were. In the 1940s, uh, women didn't expect to be anything more than maybe a housewife, a school teacher, or a nurse. And these women wanted to have a purpose in life that was bigger than anything else that had been allowed at the time, socially and culturally. This was an opportunity for them. When their country called, they answered. Over 25,000 women actually answered the call. And out of the 25,000, 1,074 were chosen to go through this program the Women Air Force Service Pilots Program. And even just to apply, I'll just say, <laughs> that the women had to have at least 500 hours of flying time already. So it was different than men enlisting in the Air Force. Um, male cadets could enlist and, and have zero flying time, zero flight experience, but these women had to at least have had 500 hours in their pilot's license. So oftentimes, when they got to training, they actually knew more than their flight instructors. Yeah, many people don't even realize that women were held to different standards than men at that time, let alone that there were women that served as pilots during World War II. You know, and, and to broaden that scope a little bit, uh, just to give you a hidden figure, because that was such a popular movie last year, I'll give you another hidden figure, that there are over 310,000 women who worked in the U.S. aircraft industry during World War II. So out of that, what we're trying to do is, is use the WASP program as part of the core, the heart of the series. But the series wants to expand and be inclusive of all women at that time in the country so that we talk about our African-American women who were denied entrance by the military into the WASP program. And we talk about the fact that what they did was and then they went, took themselves to Tuskegee, where they flew with the Black Army Air Force, Tuskegee Airmen. Also, we talk about women uh, like Hazel Lee, who was uh, one of two Chinese-American pilots in the WASP program. And she was the last American woman to die as a WASP during World War II. 
and when they returned her home, the local cemetery refused to let her be buried in her hometown because she was Chinese. Oh, wow. And one thing I think is really great is you guys are really focusing on a part of history that may not even be known or has been overlooked. Yeah. Now, can you give our audience an idea of what the series is going to look like? I think we want to portray women in, in, a, in a way they've never been seen. I mean, if you look at some of these images of these women, they were strong, they were confident, they were fierce, and they were courageous. I mean, they were living in a time where really nobody wanted them to do what they were doing except for the fact that the country was at war. So they were asked to come and contribute to that effort, and as soon as the war was over, they were told, okay, now it's time to go back home. We have to talk about what this country was at that time. Women didn't have equal rights at that time, and they were looked at in a very narrow prism. Yeah, it's easy to forget that by the time World War II started, women had only earned the right to vote 10 or 11 years earlier. Yeah, and one thing that really shocked me talking about this is I grew up on an airport. I had the opportunity to be around some amazing individuals that had many years of wisdom on them, and I also came across two uh, wasps that my dad introduced and, and on that airport and especially with my dad, my dad took the time to say, hey, these two young ladies here, or at the time they're older ladies, uh, are amazing individuals. They have a story to tell and you need to hear it. So it's really crazy to, to think that there's a whole other part of history that was never explained to other people because these women were treated with such honor on the airport. It's great that times have changed. Um, you know, the WASP were not recognized until 1977 for their right. service. I did not know that WASP existed until five years ago when I met Mattia Carell and I was a history major at Dartmouth College. Erin Miller, Elaine Harmon's granddaughter, who was uh, a force behind getting the WASP inurnment rights at Arlington, talks about growing up, going to high school, telling their teachers what their moms did and their teachers saying, no, you're a liar, your mom never flew. So I think what we're seeing is, um, luckily, we're seeing a change. You know, we, we have progressed as a country. So now we're hoping that this is a, a moment in time where the studios and production companies and, and you know, powers that be will help us get this series on television because America's ready for it and the world's ready for it. I mean, our fans are just dying for this to be on, on air. Um, and I think one thing too I'd like to point out when Mattia first started with this project, it was very hard to explain to producers and studio mm -hmm. executives, why is this important? They weren't in combat. Well, aviation was incredibly dangerous at that time. The women tested planes that men would refuse to fly because they had a reputation for killing their test pilots. If men were, let's say, hesitant about flying some aircraft, they would just Right, go to the women. If women can do it, then you can do it. The B-26 was called the Widow. The Widowmaker. Well, we have a great friend, Edna Davis, and that was her favorite airplane. And I said to her, Edna, weren't you afraid all these men are dying? How come you were anxious to get in the plane and fly it? And she said, oh, it's my favorite plane. I love that plane. And the WASP themselves have a almost cavalier attitude. They're incredibly grateful that they were allowed the opportunity to serve. Um, however, when they were in service, there was a huge smear campaign against them. That's actually why they were disbanded. A guy by the name of Drew Pearson called them women of ill, Ill repute, repute, as Edna likes to say, <laughs> um, prostitutes. Uh, so uh, there was a, a huge amount of, of um, animosity against them. There were actually sabotagers, um, people who worked on their planes who sabotaged their planes. And then once they were disbanded, their husbands or parents oftentimes didn't want them to talk about the fact that they were pilots, that or, they were wasps. It was a big... Or they didn't, or out yeah. of respect for their, their, their husbands or their brother's service. Right. They, they remained quiet, they right. kept it quiet, and it wasn't until the West Point, as Hillary mentioned in the 1970s, that they had a big press release saying that it was graduating its first class of female pilots. Well, you can imagine what these women from 1942 and 44 thought about that. So after this big announcement from West Point, that there became a huge effort to uh, unclassified all the, all the information on the WASP during World War II. 
and then thankfully I was Barry Goldwater who petitioned Congress to give these women veteran status. And then of course in 2010 when Obama's administration gave the civilian, the highest civilian honor they could to these women, the gold medal. And so yes, now if you think of 1944 and then you 2010, it's been a long time in coming. So we're very happy that these women get the respect that they do. I, I do have one quick story, which is Violin Cotton was at a Memorial Day um, celebration at the National Cemetery. It just occurred to her at that moment, and she was 80 years old when she had this thought that she in fact was part of this, that she was in fact a veteran, that she, she had contributed to the war effort. So it took a woman more than 50 years, maybe 60 years, for her to understand her contribution and her value. And I guess what we want to show is to, to have, an, uh, we need another archetype for women. These women, during a time where they had to fight a lot of discrimination, a lot of adversity uh, to what they were doing, that, that in spite of all that, in spite of everything they had to face, they did it anyway and they did it well, they did it extremely well. Now, not only are you working on the Fly Girl series, but you're also developing a documentary about the WASPs as well. And uh, that sounds like that could be something really valuable uh, for education, like say in a high school history class. We didn't actually set out to do this, but we did set out to interview as many living WASPs as possible. And as more and more we heard their stories, we realized we were creating an educational archive. Most of these women, uh, when we first started, we're in their early 90s. Now they're 95 and above. Also, this idea that as they get older, they're willing to give us a little bit more, uh, a more of a look into what they experience because there's been such distance in World War II, right, that they actually are more honest in a way, as opposed to just soft peddling, oh, we had a great time, it was lovely, and anything for our country. Now, I think they're more uh, comfortable with talking about things that they may had to have dealt with. And so we realized this educational series was extremely important. And it's really important, I think, for young boys and girls all over to know that women haven't just arrived. We haven't just become pilots. <laughs> you know, we were there in the 40s. We want to get these stories out to schools and to museums and aviation organizations. So we have a nonprofit fiscal sponsor through which we are raising money in order to complete these productions. And now we're at a point where we are putting together a documentary about our trip to Sweetwater. We interviewed 11 WASP, so it will include interviews from those WASP. And the only way I can say is you feel like you're closest to heaven as you'll ever be. As well as footage from Sweetwater. Sweetwater, Texas is the first all-female Air Force base. Yes, Avenger Field. So Avenger Field, where the WASP trained, is in Sweetwater, Texas. Now there is a WASP National Museum there, and they're doing a fabulous job, and they put on a wonderful homecoming celebration over Memorial Day. So our documentary celebrating that is called Coming Home. And we'll be giving copies of this to all the WASP and their families who attended to the museum. Um, and like I said, to uh, public schools and aviation uh, museums around the country uh, for free. So we need the help of our fans, maybe your fans as well, <laughs> we hope, to, we uh, to complete uh, post-production. We'll be uh, starting a campaign at, on Seed and Spark which is a fabulous crowdfunding platform and there's also distribution built into Seed and Spark as well. So we're very excited about that and excited to get the women themselves telling their stories out to as many people as possible. Absolutely. One thing I really love about this interview is uh, with Flight Tests, we have uh, a passion to entertain, educate, and inspire the world of flight. And I love what you guys are doing with taking history that may not be known or was not shared previously uh, and connecting it with a way that entertains, informs, but also inspires and connects people to, uh, to be better. Yeah, I actually had the opportunity to meet a WASP uh, last year, and I got to talk with her. She flew in a C-47, she brought supplies overseas, and then she brought wounded soldiers back home. And just hearing her story, I was amazed that no one has ever really made, with all the World War II movies that are out there, no one has really made a, a movie or a series about the WASP. So I, I love that you guys are doing this. When you think about 
When was World War II over? 1945, and this is 2017. It, it's amazing if you counted, and we can't count the number of World War II films that have been made, and obviously they should be, right? But battle and war and the death and all of that. I, I, I so appreciate that, and, and in no way am I taking anything away from that. It's just that women were part of that picture on some level, and even if they, you know, even if it was, as, as Hillary mentioned, picking up an aircraft that had never been flown before with three little pieces of paper that somehow told you how to operate this, this new plane, and, and took it from there to another airfield, from that airfield to another airfield, and finally to the European theater where American men were able to, to fly. Well, it's oh. amazing that in all the World War II movies oh, and TV right. shows, you know, you, you just don't see the presence of women, really, in the military. You see them maybe as nurses or as the wives or things or as secretaries, um, which are important jobs. It's just that there is a wider scope of participation, and it just helps to see the world a little bit broader. There are lots of people doing lots of different roles and they're all important. Absolutely. Uh, I think this is a really great call to action because these women are not going to be around forever. Uh, they have wisdom, they have stories, they have, they have information that can help us become better individuals. And actually if you have any uh, followers or fans uh, in LA, I would expect you do, we have a wonderful event that we're putting on November 12th. So it's the day after Veterans Day, Veterans Day weekend. We will have at least three WASP who are local here, but we're actually working on flying in some of the WASP who were at uh, Avenger Field for their homecoming um, to put on our, our fourth panel event, The Greatest Generation Meets the, the Next Generation, and the Santa Monica Museum of Flying in, in uh, Santa Monica, California at the Santa Monica Airport is, has graciously agreed to host us. So we're going to have a remarkable event, uh, and anyone in L.A., Pasadena, San Diego, anyone in the come vicinity, down. yeah, you should come. Yeah, if we do have any fans that live in the area, that would be a great opportunity for them to meet these amazing women. I think there is something to be said, uh, and Hillary just said this, but to be in the presence of greatness, um, there is there is nothing there is nothing like it, and and I think that's that's what this will be. Uh, both the Coming Home DVD and our event on November 12th uh, where we celebrate and we honor these women for their incredible contribution to our country. Well, Mattia and Hillary, we want to say thank you so much for being on the show today. We really love what you're doing. We're excited to see the progress of the show. And if you guys watching, if you want to find out more about the show, about the series and the documentary, follow their social media. Uh, we'll have the links down below. Also, you'll find a link to their fundraising campaign as well. And as always, thank you so much for being part of the Flight Test family. Thank you for the opportunities you've given us to be able to interview amazing women like this and unveil a lot of great history. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe. We have over four to five episodes a week. You've got to hit that notification bell if you want to see them all. We'll see you next time. See you next time. Thank you.